is how I slept last night. Instead of sleeping in a hammock, I uh, slept in a, my uh, swinging hammock chair here. And I just put my feet up on the stool, wrap my blanket here around my legs and everything. I got a liner inside of here. So I turned my poncho into kind of a lazy boy type deal, you know. If you can sleep in a lazy boy, you can sleep in this right here. And the nice thing is, if you're somewhere that you need to get in and out frequently or something like that, you know, you just climb in, you just get in and out of here really quick. A lot easier than getting in and out of a hammock. So, you know, it's kind of a different way to do things, but it's it's pretty nice and cozy actually. I really I really enjoy sleeping like this in the in the hammock chair here. And uh, so I just wrap my survival blanket around me. I'm cozy, good to go, man. Then I just had this tarp tied out to a stake out here. I just undid it from the stake so I could just show you <clears throat> how uh, how it looked, and I just flip it back so you could see. This uh, this fabric here is all the this is the Atax, the the poncho I'm using for my chair, and my tarp here is the Atax FG uh, camel. Of course, this is multicam, but uh, Anyway, it's very nice. It was really cozy. This helped keep some of the breeze off of me that flows down the canyon a little bit. Kind of made it, some of it, most of it kind of went over me. So, hey, I had a great, great night's sleep. Looking forward to having a little bit of breakfast now. Getting on to my day here. One thing that's kind of fun to do with these fleeces is unsnap, like unsnap one side. And then you get just a little bit on the downwind side of the fire it fills up the whole inside like a balloon with hot air <laughs> then you go like that it's like you just got your clothes out of the dryer <laughs> anyway I'm just getting things warmed up kind of getting things set gonna cook me some breakfast as you can swell I don't know if you can see it very good or not it snowed last week up here so there's still some patches of snow here and there in the grass so, getting off to a nice start today. Campground up here is practically empty. Um, most of the thing was all reserved, but nobody showed up because it snowed during the week and everybody was thinking, ah, uh, not good enough weather to go camping, but hey, to me, any day is a good camping day. Well, I got everything underway here. Got some grits cooking over there. <coughs> Got some eggs uh, done. I can pull those off. Some more water cooking. I got a brat roasting on the fire right there. I got me some mocha cooking or heating right there. So I'm looking good here this morning. It's going to be a good breakfast. Good start to my day here. And I, I love being up here. It's I can't... Uh, I can't get enough of being outside. <laughs> think I'm addicted to it or something. I'm going to show you a little something fun for... I'm going to have dessert with my breakfast, so I'll show you some of that too when I get done here. Well, the temperature just hit 32 degrees. Just got up to the freezing point here. Well, my water containers got slushy last night. Frozen on top, but slushy. So my grits is close to done. Got my mocha here ready. Got my some more hot water here. I got a brat that I'm using like a sausage and a couple of eggs here. So I'm about I'm about ready to eat. And uh, <coughs> hey, can you see me? <laughs> I uh, took off from the shop yesterday afternoon after getting our shipments out for the day and I forgot my tripod so my bike in my backpack I have this little tripod it and the legs extend out it's like this tall <laughs> so today I'm going to have to do some 
rigging around to uh, get that thing to, to get some pictures. So you got a bird's eye view of the fire and breakfast. Okay, so I know you can't see this very good due to my no tripod, but so I got my eggs, my broth that I cooked, my uh, grits. So I got all that into this. I just loaded it all in this cast iron fry pan. That way, as I'm eating, it's the temperature still hadn't got above 32 yet, but so having it in this nice hot, it's not really hot, but it's fairly warm fry pan in this uh, cool air, that'll help keep all my breakfast um, nice and toasty warm while I'm eating it. And this really tastes good with the uh, eggs and this uh, Johnsonville brat here. It's like some of the climbers are starting to roll in here to start climbing on these mountains here today. That's what this place is famous for. But all those flavors mixed together, the saltiness, the, the different spices and all that combined together really makes for a nice tasty meal you know, all mixed together. So I'm going to finish this up and then get on to some other exciting stuff today. <laughs> it's going to be a nice day. I don't see a I don't see a cloud in the sky anywhere. It's going to be beautiful. Well, I'm going to make I'm going to I'm going to do you some scones here. So I'm going to do you some scones. I'm the one eating. <laughs> I brought some honey with me, some Dakota honey from North Dakota. And during the night it got a little too cold and it was hard as a brick, so I put it in some water here and I'm just warming it up so it'll actually come out. Uh, so my kids got me one of these collapsible hot dog roasters for Christmas or birthday or something one year. So Works really nice. We cooked some scones at the house the other night. And there's a few left over, four of them. So I brought them up here and I had two last night. And then uh, saved a couple for breakfast. So I just kind of roast these like, I'll open this up a little. Whoops, not that much. Some hot coals here. So I just put them up here and you just, just kind of cook them like a hot dog or whatever. I just I want to keep it away enough that I get it warmed all the way through and then get it just slightly slightly toasted on the outside then I'll split it open and pour some honey down inside of there these things are good I had two of them last night around the campfire about 1130 last night darn good stuff Ooh, looks like we're getting there. <laughs> I don't want to burn it. Well, it's nice, nice and hot. And then the outside's a little. See, that's nicer than when you have leftover scones. You put them in the microwave. They get, they're kind of soft. So I'm gonna see what I can do here. But eating this little bugger. It's likely to be pretty messy. Try to dive into here and just open me up a little slot. Little slot for the honey to go in. That's what we're looking for. Uh, I think I got it plenty melted. <laughs> It's going to be runny as water now, but it'll be good. It will be very good. I don't dare hold this scone right over me because it's got honey just going to ooze out everywhere.
Mm. Yeah, see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's just so good. Oh man, cinnamon chip scones roasted over the campfire with honey. We're living. I'm telling you what, we're living here. <clears throat> roasted over the fire. Well, honey inside. Dessert for breakfast. That's what I call living, man. I'll tell you what, I like it. This stuff is dripping all down my fingers and my hands. I'm gonna be a mess. Uh, let me show you my little setup here. I call this a, a lounger. It's a lounger bivy setup. It's kind of what I call it. <clears throat> so I'm using my poncho inside of there as a as a lounge chair, and I'm using my uh, my Atax FG tarp over the top as a canopy, and that can either be wind, shade, snow, or whatever you need as a canopy. And sometimes you don't even need one. So let me just show you how I set this one up, and then I'll, I might show you a couple other setups. So this canopy I put on here, I only used um, I only used one cord to hold it up, and that's this that's this uh, parachute cord right here that's at the center point of the tarp. And I just used that to lift up a little bit on it. On the on the foot end here, I just used one of the shock cords that come with it to tie it around a tree and, uh, and then on this other end these trees are only about 10 feet apart and so my tarp on the diagonal is 10 so I just folded it over down to the first tab here and just kind of tucked that in and then I secured to this tab here and then you see back over here to that one I secured both of those around secured both those around with another one of the shock cords that comes in the kit. Then down here on the uh, on this diagonal right here, I changed. I just uh, instead of using the shock cord that came that comes with the tent stake, I just hooked the third. You get three of these shock cords with each tarp, so I just hooked the third one in here uh, just to kind of pull down on this corner. And on this side right here, I use the shock cord that's actually in the tent stake to hold this one. So now I've got I've got good movement of my tarp. So I'm really so I'm really nicely secured there. All right, so let me show you a little about this little lounger lounger bivy setup. So I can give it my own name since I came up with it I guess. So that's more that's more blanket than I really need. Now I I pitch this cord up here kind of high on the tree a little bit. I can let it down a little more like that and it makes it easier in and out. But that's just how I wanted it last night. I wanted it up a little bit higher. So, but you see how easy it is, to, <laughs> how easy it is to adjust it. And then see now, if it was a nice, if it was a hot day or something, you could position this tarp one side or the other side or however, in order to get yourself some shade, you know. But if it were rainy, then how I had it pitched earlier would work really nice too. And I just have my my uh, survival blanket in here and a liner 
and I just, I put the liner in first, and then I wrapped the survival blanket around me and got inside of here. And that's how I slept the night. And this is, uh, this is just as comfortable as being in a, in a lounge chair, you know, in your living room. To lay back, take a snooze. I slept so good last night. It was, uh, it was really nice. So basically the head end up here is hooked up the same way like you hook up a hammock. But I usually hook it up about nose high or something like that to me. And, and however you do it, you can give yourself a more horizontal or more vertical, however you want to do it. But normally, about five feet high or so is about right where to tie it off up here. And then on this end down here, you know, it'll bring it up or bring it down. So you can adjust your incline that way too, as well as how high you hook it on the tree over there. So there's a ton of different ways you can do it. And uh, let me just show you some close-ups here. So, so whenever you tie off the head end up here, I just got my knot right here. After I go around my, my tree, I go around at least once and then double back. And then I just tied off uh, two half hitches here. And then that leaves me, since my cord's doubled over, you know, how, you hook, how we do our hammocks, I've got a piece of cord right here and a piece of cord over there on the other side. I just bring that cord right down here, and this is the bottom tab. You see, this is where you're, if you're making a hammock, you drop a cord right through that sleeve right here. So all I've done is tied off a half hitch here, a couple half hitches there, and the same thing on the other side. And then I put a stick through here, and I usually like them to be four or five feet long, some, somewhere in there. And you just make sure on the stick you take your knife or hatch it or clean off any burrs or whatever so it's nice and smooth. This is a birch, so there wasn't much to clean up on there. And once you got that, I just put a, a bowl in here, a bowl and loop here, went around that tree over here. There's the hammock, there's the carabiner that I put in there. This tree doesn't matter as much because it's small diameter, but if you get a pretty good sized diameter tree, it's hard to swing in it because these cords are so far apart. So I just, you know how to ever do this, but I just put it in there because it makes it swing back and forth a lot easier. Then on the other side over here, I just put, uh, I just actually tied off, went around and doubled back and then put a couple half hitches. And I just wrapped the extra cord around the end of the end over there just so it's out of the way. So that's really it. So anyway, this is Perry Peacock, Wilderness Innovation. Uh, just showing you some other fun stuff you can do with our gear. Hope you have a great day outdoors like I always do. Uh, take care. We'll see you on the next video.